Yeah. Uh, go ahead and press the record button on your own thing. Yeah. Should Is everybody clap? recording? We typically, recording. we don't do this after we go live, but you know we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to do a clap like this uh, on three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, wow. Look at that. All out of sync on live yeah. on there. So that's okay. We're going to record it live, and then I'll edit it out and post. Uh, and then finally, the live now tweet, which I always do uh, during the live while well, we've already gone live. There we go. Live now tweet. Done. <laughs> Thanks for joining us once again. I'm Sammy K. Powers, and this is the PHP Roundtable. This is a live podcast of developers discussing topics that PHP nerds care about. The ultimate goal of this podcast is to learn a little something from each other. If you're listening live and want to be a part of this little shindig, send a tweet to PHP Roundtable, and we'll try to get your question slash snarky comment answered live on air if we can. So PHP doesn't support asynchronous features natively, but it does support coroutines. Coroutines have been a feature of PHP since PHP 5.5, and this allows us to do some really cool non-blocking stuff. So today we're going to be chatting about concurrency in PHP and how we might be able to use it to speed up our apps. And since we know what we're talking about, we should meet the panelists. <laughs> and in no particular order, we have Case Jan Kivet. Did I say it right? Almost, Kivit. almost. Kivit. Kivit. Woohoo. <laughs> Case Jan is highly interested in asynchronous programming and is a destroyer of servers. Welcome, Case Jan. Thank you. We also have Sergi. Juke. Yes. Yeah, all right. Sergey writes articles and books and creates screencasts about React PHP, making people aware of asynchronous PHP. Welcome, Sergey. Thank you. Good to be here. Absolutely. And finally, we have Brent Rosa. Brent is a Belgian PHP developer who works at Spassi. He, so he is rather active in the open source Laravel community. He also blogs about PHP and programming in general at Stitcher.io and is a web performance enthusiast. Welcome, Brent. Thank you. We were going to have Aaron uh, Petrowski join us. He tried really hard to join, uh, but unfortunately, we couldn't make any of the dates and times work. Uh, this particular episode took a really long time to schedule and finally get on the docket. And I can't believe we're actually having this episode because it took forever to get it on here. Um, but I'm really happy it finally worked out with uh, at least enough people to kind of have a little panel here. So if you're new to asynchronous programming, you might want to listen to episode 44, where we talk all about asynchronous PHP. Uh, it's all about general PHP. Or general async in PHP. Um, and it's one of the most popular episodes because uh, it gets a ton of traffic from Google, people searching for the keywords async PHP. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see that a lot of people are looking for this stuff, like trying to do async in PHP. But as we discussed in PHP, uh, but as we discussed in episode 44, PHP doesn't really natively support async. But you can achieve async in PHP. So like, I'll just throw this out to anybody. How is it even possible if PHP doesn't even natively support async, how do we make async possible in PHP? Well, I guess it, it depends on what's, what your definition of async is. And if I remember, remember correctly, actually, I, I listened to the uh, number 44 podcast today. Um, Aaron actually gave a few examples of uh, things that are possible in PHP. And the thing that makes async asynchronous is that you're you're doing something, but instead of waiting for the thing to finish to start the next one, you you say to something, uh, you say just okay, take this task and uh, figure it out and come to, come back to me when it's done with the result and there are some functions in PHP that actually help doing that. The most obvious one, uh, and I think Aaron also gave that example, is uh, a simple proc open. You know, you just start a child process from your PHP process, and the OS actually handles the scheduling and stuff. So that's that's one very obvious, simple example um, why async in PHP is possible. Now, uh, on the topic of uh, of generators, uh, async doesn't nece necessarily mean multi-threaded, but maybe we'll get into that later. Um, so yeah, that's my, uh, my contribution for now. I think Kaysian is muted. Actually. Yeah, Kaysian, I'm sorry, I had to mute you because there's some background noise, but feel free to unmute yourself at any time. <laughs> so also for Async code, I think the important thing is having non-blocking I.O. So without non-blocking I.O., 
there will be you know, this, uh, this uh, continuous task switching between different micro pieces of work. So we, we have, let's say, two large tasks, for example, two HTTP requests, and under the hood, our asynchronous code breaks down these tasks into micro, as small as possible pieces. And our code constantly switches between this piece, this piece, this piece, and what makes sense here is non-blocking I.O. where we start the request and we don't need to wait it. We just start and do some other work. When the request is done, we are notified and we come back and process the response. So always exactly. remember that that uh, you should have non-blocking I.O. Without it, it, it would be hard to achieve. It's actually, oh, sorry. It's actually crazy when you think about it. Uh, if you look at the, the normal web request, uh, I mean, most of PHP applications are simple web requests. Uh, how how little PHP code is actually doing work? You're yes. executing queries to the database. You're reading cache files. You're um, maybe uh, reading template files or images and rendering images and th things like that. And and there's actually very little PHP that's actually doing real things. And all those other um, uh, tasks that have to be executed, these are all IO tasks. And uh, if they can be uh, executed in parallel, then you're uh, writing async PHP. And oh, yeah, there's the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, indeed, we, we, we need the async IO to make to spread those operations out. So like you said, PHP doesn't do a lot uh, these days. Most of its time is spent waiting on database connections, uh, file streams, uh, file requests. And the way we the way we make uh, async AO happen in PHP um, is to actually wait for the operating system to tell us, well, this uh, file connection of this this connection to that server or this file stream has some data to be read to be write from. So um, we wait for that point, and then we operate on it, and then we move on to the next. And in between those times, we wait and we perform other tasks while there is, is time to do that. And we can do that uh, with a reactor pattern like uh, RegPHP does. We can do that with um, curl, which, which allows a async option to, to run multiple requests at the same time. We can do that with proc open to uh, run different scripts at the same time, or using Ajax from a web browser. These are all examples where you can do that. Um, they use different patterns, different ways, but essentially it's all asynchronous programming. And you can go a bit further and say that when, whenever you pop a message on the queue and there's a worker somewhere else, that's also asynchronous programming because we pop it on, on this side and it gets picked up here by someone else. So it sounds like there's a lot of ways of do, before doing async in PHP, but there's but I guess when people say that PHP doesn't support it natively, it means that it doesn't have like an async and await um, keyword or or things like that. Is is that what they're kind of talking about? Or I think so because since PHP for something we have proc open, and I think since four three we have stream select, right? Which is essentially essentially a way to build a a pure PHP event loop. We can do that since 10, 15 years, something. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I want to take a step back and look at concurrency specifically, because I think a lot of people, when they hear the word concurrency, think, oh, in parallel or at the same time. But concurrency doesn't necessarily mean that by default, right? It just means that things get executed not necessarily in the same order every time, but will always have the same result. Yeah. Is that, mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Cool. Because uh, if you think about it, uh, you're executing the SQL query, uh, you're uh, loading those template files from the system, you're doing a lot of things. And if you can uh, do those things in um, a, a non-specified order, uh, then you're speaking of concurrency. If those things can be uh, scrambled and, and put together at a certain point in time, um, and if you can parallel, parallelize them, uh, you gain the uh, performance uh, 
benefits. But doing things uh, concurrent, yeah, it just it means uh, scrambling those things up, all those little tasks, and you do quite a lot of things uh, in a, a normal web request, which can already be executed concurrently, um, and they they might give a huge performance benefit. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that people often confuse concurrency with parallel because from from a long distance away. Concurrency looks like we run in parallel, but at the instant moment of time, we actually execute only one bit of code. And yes, concurrency is a way to build things. It is a composition of different uh, independently executing things, while parallel, it is about execution, actually. Parallel is about doing things, while concurrency is about dealing these things, communication between them. I think so. Cool. So so concurrency is more about kind of breaking up uh, the execution into smaller tasks, and they can be executed in any arbitrary order. And then yes. that's kind of step one. And then we can take that and smush them together and run them in parallel to get our, to get our asynchronous non-blocking stuff, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So it's, uh, Casey, yeah. and you, you started to say something? No, oh, um, I was going to say that. Um, and I forgot it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So, um, I do like, so concurrency by itself, does it have, add any benefit? Like, if we're not doing anything in parallel, just breaking up these tasks into smaller little bite sized chunks, does it add any benefit to our scripts if we're not doing concurrency with um, uh, the added parallel on top? Well, it depends a bit on, on how much you're doing. Um, one of the ways we, we use it at work is to scale or improve the performance of filling up Elasticsearch. Um, and one of the issues we had is that uh, I work at a company where we have all the buildings in the Netherlands in Elasticsearch with coordinates and some other information. And one of the problems we had is that um, we had to fill 10 million uh, documents into Elasticsearch in under 48 hours because that was, that's how long a weekend is. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it sounds silly, uh, but back in the day when we were, when we were still a little uh, startup and we didn't have a lot of customers, it wouldn't matter if the system was down-ish and stable during the weekend. So I use React PHP to, to push out as many request as possible to get as many documents in in those 48 hours. And in a way, it's super awesome because you can generate documents in child processes, uh, shove them up to the main thread, and then set them off to less search. Uh, and that works. Uh, downside is there is no, there were, well, there was no control flow at that time. So we were just getting, as, a, as we got the document, we set them now to less search and hope for the best. Fire and forget. What would happen is that the operating system started complaining, well, you have now about 2,000 outgoing requests at the same time. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so we were missing 10, 20,000 documents at any given import. Um, so you can speed things up. You can also overdo it. So by now, we improved uh, the scripting and the handling so that we can essentially insert them still in the same time frame, but using a different API and in a much more orderly fashion, where we don't have timeouts, where we have a confirmation of each document, and um, but still have the performance ingress of documents. And also, the system has to stay up now, so we're doing it slower uh, and more, we're keeping less Kurt happy. So it's, it, yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool. I, so you just kind of looking at concurrency and kind of without the parallel aspects, are we, um, what, what is our uh, primary ways of adding concurrency to PHP? Um, not necessarily just the parallel stuff, but just concurrency, kind of breaking up everything into bite-sized chunks like you were talking about. Um, well, it depends a bit. Uh, in our case, we needed to do a lot of things at the same time. 
So we were handling certain search requests that uh, would take up to a thousand calls to like search and back and having that done in under 30 seconds. So what we did is we split up each, each uh, query into a different objects. Uh, there were specific queries that handled multiple calls uh, and we, we split those things up. So those, those bits of code don't know that they're actually running asynchronously um, using coroutines um, in an event loop. They just know that when I call this, I'm getting that. So when you, you chop those things up, little, little chunks, um, it doesn't matter if you're running them in one long uh, blocking uh, scripts or if you're running them concurrently uh, in a, in a non-blocking fashion. Uh, and by splitting things up, you already um, have a basis to go whichever way you want uh, with your uh, uh, with your program. You want more concurrency, you want less concurrency. Uh, I think that's, that's one of the first steps you should take uh, with those kind of things. You need to be prepared to to handle a lot of things at the same time, scale out easily. Uh, and not just on a big amount of server levels, but in your single request, things can scale out there as well. Like I said, the, the 1,000 search queries in under 30 seconds, because that's how long we can let a request take. For sure, for sure. So um, I'm, I guess I want to kind of look at specifically one feature of PHP that we mentioned earlier uh, before we start talking about uh, coroutines and things like that, and that is generators. And I don't know uh, how many people have, have uh, out there who are listening have had experience with generators. I've, I've personally have only used generators in production to do the very basic functionality of reading a really log, long, like a really big file and trying not to load the entire file in memory, but reading a little bit at a time and just having using the yield keyword to kind of uh, return a little bit at a time. It actually returns, when you use the yield keyword, it actually returns an instance of generator, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy. Like it's like yield the string, but you don't get a string back. You get a generator. So is it sort of like a? Does would would it would it would you liken a generator more to like a promise in JavaScript, or is it more of just like a like a data a special kind of iterable data type? It's more like the like the last one. Uh, it's and the documentation also says it. It's it's a kind of iterator. And um, the thing about generators is that you can uh, have multiple not return points but yield points but you can also pass data in so it it results in a, a very good uh, structure to to uh, support parallel uh, execution because you can uh, just you, you can you have a huge loop which just uh, checks your uh, application state your whole application state that's called the event loop uh, and in PHP, we don't have a, a baked-in event loop, so we have to write it ourselves. Um, but the generator allows for uh, easy pinging between uh, code that's being executed somewhere else and uh, your the yeah, the main the main event loop. So it's it, it's a very good data structure to support this kind of of things. But it's by no definition the thing that allows for, for async. It isn't async PHP, it's just uh, a tool to, to help with it. It's, it's indeed, it's a, it's, a, um, it's a way to help us may, write um, easier understandable code for people that are starting to use asynchronous PHP. Um, because under the hood, if whatever you're using Recoil or AMP, um, there are still promises under those yields um, for asynchronous yeah. PHP. And um, generators, in a way, are, are awesome. Um, one of the other things completely non-async um, or use them for is uh, PHP units, um, I guess providers, where you can provide data for tests. So instead of having mm -hmm. to return a huge uh, array, you can just yield each item you're going to use. Um, Keep in mind that when you do that, a PHP unit counts all of them, takes them all of them into memory. Hmm. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's if you want to do stuff with that, um, do it mainly to make your code more readable. Hmm. Um, you can still go out of memory because uh, 
for P2P unit to tell you how much uh, of the unit test you've done and how much are in total, it needs to count all the entries in the generator. So the, one of the, the big things that, that's popping up in my mind always when thinking about async PHP, uh, when we compare it to, for example, JavaScript, is that there's uh, a very large difference between what we generally use PHP for compared to JavaScript. JavaScript runs in the browser. It's very event-driven because users are actually clicking and doing stuff. And uh, most people know PHP uh, from that simple request response cycle, just one mm -hmm. simple flow. And there are things we can do to within that simple cycle to uh, to actually use concurrency and 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 parallelize things to to improve performance but i i, I think the the biggest benefit from improving async support in php will be uh, will not necessarily be that simple request response cycle but everything around it um if we look at the uh, for example I, i'm a laravel developer uh, Please don't shout or something. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, and uh, there's there's a simple queuing system, and we actually use it very very often to send mails to render images, which you don't want to have the user wait for to um, do uh, massive calculations or imports exports. You know these kind of things that don't really have to block that simple request response cycle. We use PHP still, but we don't necessarily do it within the HTTP request. And uh, I'm very interested to see um, where PHP will be going in the next years if we, if, if the community decides to add more and more async support, because there are a lot of uh, uncharted territories, I think, um, which we can yeah, use it for. But, we cannot simply make the, a one-to-one -one comparison with JavaScript because JavaScript is very event-driven because the user is, is actively working in the browser, and that's not really happening with, with PHP. No, but um, when you start running a, a PHP script as an HTTP server, right? that's exactly what's, what's happening. Instead yeah. of handling and Button, button clicks or handling requests or you're handling websockets and people clicking buttons in browsers that's coming back to your application. Yeah. Um, and we're traditionally not used to that as PHP developers. That's right. And the core isn't really ready for that in PHP. Um, we can do it and we, we can go really far with it. Mm. But um, even doing a simple file get contents is blocking or sleep is blocking. Uh, what, mm. what I see in support tickets a lot of the time is, well, I tested this code and I added the sleep right there just uh, to see to see if uh, if things are asynchronous or not. Yeah, but mm. that sleep is blocking the rest of uh, the main thread. Because, mm. well, async PHP's dirty little secret is that um, everything's blocking. We tell everyone it's non-blocking, but essentially it's one thread that does everything. And if you block at one specific point, you block the rest of the thread. Hmm. So one of the things I would love to see in PHP 8, I'm not sure if it's happening, um, is async and await. Yeah. Where you can actually have um, functions async compatible in the core with an event loop in the core. And might be a lot to ask for, but if we have that, um, you can literally do, let's say file get content is an async function that can return a promise if you put the await keyword in front of it. So if you do that, um, you have a promise, it runs, and by the time things get back to you, you have your data. Um, so if you go for the construction like that, I see a lot of potential for PHP. Mm. And I mean, many people are talking about it, so I think there's it's it's uh, there is a chance it will come. Uh, Ziv, but it just... will require such things as event loop promises mm. to be implemented in the core of the language. Yes, correct. If correct. file get contents returns a promise. Yeah, yeah. So there is. Um, 
look it up real quick. Um, there is someone working on this. Uh, the it's, fibers? Sorry? Are you talking about fibers? Beyond fibers, Martin Schroeder is um, working on a extension for P2P. Let me... Yes, in, actually, in the... Aaron, uh, Aaron gave some uh, feedback. He, Aaron was wanting to mention this, actually, as well. Um, yeah. He said, uh, Martin Schroeder has written an extension that implements fibers as well as some other async utilities. And you can find it at github.com slash concurrent dash php slash ext dash async. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's similar to the fiber extension, uh, though instead of fiber yield, the function is task await, which is used to await awaitables or promises. Um, like the fiber extension, task await can be called in any function pausing the VM at that point. This eliminates the need for functions to return promises to be async. Instead, functions can return the value of what would otherwise be used to fulfill the promise in the current async models. So that's that's all this all this uh, what I just read there was from from Aaron. He sent a little email. He's like, so I'm still going to contribute to the PHP roundtable. Here's here's what I was going to say. <laughs> Um, but there, uh, um, uh, Aaron was saying that Nicholas Keller and him were uh, uh, busy building AMP version three around this extension. Um, many of the libraries have an ext async branch, so he said the goal is to use this to prove the extension is worthy of being included in core, hopefully in PHP uh, seven point four or eight. Yeah, that's really ambitious seven point four. I feel like that's yeah, coming down is. the pipe. And if if uh, if if it goes to seven point four. I know there's been discussion about going to PHP eight after PHP seven three, but I don't know. We'll see. I think they they want to go PHP seven four as a final release with some maintenance and deprecation notices and little small things um, before eight. But getting this in seven four is really really ambitious. Yeah, but it would be awesome. But. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, what yeah. what we have now with generators, actually, they were a huge step in making the code readable. Uh, mm. The problem with asynchronous code is, uh, let's be honest, it is non-reasonable. Our brains don't work the way the code is written, where we execute this, then come here, execute this, then here, then here. We, we think our brain works synchronously and is single threaded we how we plan the day we do this do that do that do that and generators even with our own implementations of promises they allow to to take the best from both worlds we have our asynchronous performance code with promises and with generators we make this code look look like uh, simple synchronous code we can read and it reads like our brain works so it is much easier to write and read a synchronous program so generators were really a huge step in concurrency i think yeah for sure but i i think a sync await like we know in javascript will be uh, an even better improvement it will, be. <laughs> it will blow, blow your mind Right. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I think it's a, a very important point that Sergey is making: is that our brains don't think like the way computers process things. And um, a program programming language and its async features can be a real help to the programmer to to understand what's going on. Um, but I also think it's it's very important when you're doing async programming to to know what you're actually doing, right? We, what we see in the in the JavaScript community is the async and await keywords, which are just awesome. Um, but I think there's a real value in understanding what's going on behind the scenes there to really know uh, how async processing works. Because whether we uh, we do it at PHP level or in the core level or on OS level, there's always somewhere a loop, a simple loop scanning for status of things and asking, uh, hey, are you already done? Yes or no? What's the result? Was there an error? How do I handle that error? But in in its core, asynchro uh, asynchronous processing is a simple concept to understand, but to bring it in practice is 
is very difficult because once you start programming in an asynchronous way, things become very, very uh, confusing for our human brains very quickly. It took me six months to get used to it. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's not odd. It's not weird. So it's, it's natural. And I think um, coroutines can help with that. Mm. It's to make it easier to understand. And um, starting, and I started a new project a while ago um, with those things at the core. So everything you do in the project, everything function you run, um, runs within a coroutine. Mm -hmm. So you can use yield and um, work from there, just to make it easier for people getting started mm -hmm. and wanting to work on it. And don't want to learn promises. Um, don't want to learn how to write them, how to chain them, um, because that alone is also a lot of of information on your mind. Yeah, it's true. Sure. So I kind of, uh, I, this is, this conversation is kind of, uh, in some really cool areas. And I want to kind of like, for those who aren't really familiar with, uh, for generators and how they work and everything, uh, they, as we mentioned, they are, it is, there's a class called generator. When you use the yield keyword in a function or method, instead of the return keyword, which you would normally do, uh, you, it, it will return an instance of, uh, of generator, and you can use this to iterate over um, the data that's being yielded, not returned, but yielded. Uh, but there was some um, uh, there was some talk about how like it's it's like an iterable data type, but it's also really good for um, as uh, Jelmer Prince. I don't know if I'm saying your name properly <laughs> on Twitter. Just to point out uh, generators are also cousin. awesome when you need to crawl an API that returns page results when you need them all. And I feel like that's that's a good example of like generators are really awesome for when you have like this fire hose of data coming at you and you don't necessarily have a start and end, but you're kind of reading from a stream. Um, so it's it's kind of like a special kind of iterable data type, right? It's not like a standard like here's my fixed array that has this many things in it, and I just need to like iterate over it. It's like special use cases like that that generators are pretty cool for, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And one uh, big advantage too is the is the memory consumption, uh, namely that generators. If you're uh, reading a, a large file line per line, or uh, you're uh, crawling an API. Uh, multiple pages. You don't have to load everything first into memory to loop over it then. You can combine those things together and every uh, iteration just loads one thing you're uh, iterating on into memory, which is uh, makes quite a difference if you're uh, working with large data sets. Kessian, you wanted to say something? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not at all, actually. <laughs> I think that uh, coroutine they they hide asynchronicity. I think it's pronounced this way from us. So asynchronicity is an implementation detail. We don't reason about promises and callbacks. We just reason about values and exceptions. Hmm. So, sounds fine. Yes, we're talking about asynchronous code and. Uh, at the end, we talk that we want to hide a synchronicity. So again, uh, um, the reason is that our brain and to make to make the code work asynchronous, but to look at synchronous so we can easily write, easily maintain and understand it. And coroutines are very well for us, for this mm. sort of job. So I want to uh, I want to take this tangent with y'all because uh, you all have mentioned coroutines a couple of times. And uh, I do want to get back to a couple of generator specific things, but, um, and I want to learn how coroutines kind of tie into generators, but I do have the wiki definition of coroutines and it sounds kind of complicated, but as you mentioned earlier, uh, Casey, and that uh, coroutines are actually make it easier for uh, people to kind of get started with uh, async stuff. So I'm, I'm curious if we can merge these two ideas together, but I'm going to read the wiki definition really quickly just to, so we can all just have our brain ease out our ear for a second. Um, so it says coroutines are computer program components that generalize subroutines for non preemptive non-preemptive multitasking by allowing multiple entry points for suspending and resuming execution at certain locations. Uh, <laughs> it's like a mouthful, a big run-on <laughs> sentence that doesn't even make sense when you read it out loud. Um, but, uh, but, but generators basically allow you to uh, create coroutines. Uh, is, that, is, that, is that the basic gist? 
So the last time I read Nicholas, I think's article about this that coroutines PHP were a side effect. <laughs> they weren't sent in initially a um, uh, designed to happen, which was interesting. Um, and because this happened, um, Aaron and Nicholas jumped on this. Uh, I think Richard Dowley as well, if I pronounce it right. And they started working on, on AMP and Icicle. And one of the cool things which, which generators is and what makes this, this tick is that um, you can send data back and forth. So you can send data into the, co into the generator and out of, co uh, out of the generator again. So by using that, that trick, you can communicate um, back and forth within your coroutine. And there is some, well, I haven't looked into codes recently, but there is some magic-ish around it um, to make this happen. And you need some scheduling and some, some managing. Um, I didn't succeed at building my own yet, but um, by using those two, by using that communication channel, um, you can use it to pause the execution of your, your uh, PHP script at that specific point and come back to it when the promise resolves. So by using that, um, if I explain this right, you can build coroutines. And let's cool. say um, you might want to include a link in the notes for on the website for later on. Like it's a really, really wrong, uh, long, not wrong uh, read, but a really interesting one. And it took me a couple of times to, to get it right. Yeah, the, the, the blog by Nikita Pavlov, right? Yeah, the one. Yeah, it's, it's really technical. Um, yeah, it might you might even call it dusty initially, but once that moment clicks, things get awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's on the. I've got a link to it. I believe on the the little the blurb on the website right now. Um, I, it, yeah, I'm looking at it. So it says, um, oh, yeah. when, when in the little intro, it says do some really cool non-blocking stuff. There's a link there, and that's actually to the link that we're talking about. Um, Nikita Pavlov's blog, really, really long read. <laughs> uh, but it, it sounds like generators, had they not had the ability to do this two-way communication that you were talking about, uh, it, then coroutines probably wouldn't be possible, right? Yeah. So they would just be plain old boring generators with no coroutine. Ability. <laughs> oh, that would still be a lot of fun to use, but they're even more cool now. So <laughs> they're even cooler because we got coroutines uh, as a as a side thing that wasn't intentional. Yeah. <laughs> so when you uh, this two way communication, I, I noticed that uh, for a generator, you can you can throw an exception into the generator, not like just throw an exception, but like new up an exception and then send it into the generator to be thrown, right? Or is that sort of part of the two way communication, or actually change the values that are being yielded, or how does that? Uh, how's that two-way communication look like? Well, code-wise, or just there's literally you can, if your your function does the yields, uh, its return type will be a generator. You can't use any other return type hinting in PHP seven. Uh, things will break, sadly. Um, but that object, and I need to look at that to be sure the name is. It has a few functions. Um, and the one you want in this is the send function. It actually sends, um, if you're getting the generator from the function, you can actually send data into the generator. And normally you uh, call yield then operation, but you can also um, do um, variable is yield, semicolon. Hmm. So it then waits until you send something into the generator from outside it. And that value you sent in gets back into your variable. So cool. that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I have some use cases for this and wrote some packages to, uh, well, let me start a bit back further. Um, I'm using observables a lot. And uh, observables are in, in PHP are essentially a reactive programming and uh, not reactive pattern. But it's like a stream of um, of objects or data, and one of the things I really wanted um, is to have coroutines promises, but also uh, having a, a for each or a while loop where you can just tick off things off an observable. 
And then you start messing with, with, with generates and see if you can make this in a easy API. Um, generators and coroutines are cool. There are some details you need to be aware of to, to do it good and do it right, because there are, oops, say that right, you need finesse when dealing with them. They have their own manual and um, and you need to get that right and to fully understand them to get the best out of it. So hmm. you might think, well, I can do a yield here and it works. It might not. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things you learn the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's like asynchronous programming in general and promises. And uh, once you get a click of it, uh, things get super awesome. Mm. Cool. Well, I want to talk about some of the uh, little makeover bits that uh, P that uh, generators got in PHP 7. I do want to quickly, though, uh, mention that in the RFC for generators, the original RFC to get it in there in the first place, uh, there's a little bit of an interesting thing to make me um, help me think of generators in a slightly different way in that they're not the typical iteratable data types in that um, the rewind method on on generators is is a little bit not what you might expect hmm. um, because on the RFC it says generators are intended to be used as one-time data sources that are not supposed to be iterated another time so calling the rewind method after the first yield will throw an exception which I thought was really interesting the first the first time you call rewind without yielding it before the generator is yielded anything it'll work just fine but it won't after um, that first yield it, it'll throw an exception which I thought was really interesting way to conceptualize what kind of data you might return with the generator <laughs> I think that generator, you may consider it as a small program. When you yield something from it, the program stops, pauses, and it is a blocking program. But everything outside continues running. So you can, you can process some data, you can process your timers in a synchronous application, and you as a client code decides, decide yourself whether you want to continue with this program, with this generator, or not, whether you want to throw an exception or send some data. So I think that it is not a data, it is a sort of some some program, I, I hmm. think about it. Yeah, it's, it's a good comparison. And it also uh, kind of makes clear why rewinding doesn't really make sense. You can't more... rewind a program, yeah. Yeah, well, Maybe it might be possible. Uh, I remember some talk about it on the internals list, but um, yeah, th that's th that's the reason we should we should think of of generators as more than just simple iterables. And the comparison with a, a simple a program in itself is actually a very good one. It makes it rather clear. Um, and Kesian mentioned uh, a while back that uh, when you're yielding something, the the generator is waiting, right? But the the, the I'm, I'm going to call it the the parent process now, but it's in the same process. So, but the parent process can continue and can tell that that sub program that generator to start working again once it the data is ready and stuff. So you you can see why uh, this data structure actually really helps. Um, to uh, help promote concurrency and, and asynchronicity. That's cool. I really like that um, analogy, Sergey, about the, these coroutines or these these generators being like little programs instead of iterable data types, which they are. It's like a program as an iterable data type, but that that, that uh, it makes it a lot more. Um, it, ma it makes it easier to conceptualize why rewind doesn't make as much sense on these things. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so we have um, I. Like we're starting to get to the wrap up time and we've got lots more to talk about. So I'm kind of like, what do we whittle the rest of the show notes <laughs> down to? Um, but I, I'm kind of, I, I do want to look at, um, since we are talking about generators, I think it, it, it's sort of like the main kind of point that we've been talking about for a while. The In PHP 7.0, they did get a bit of a, a makeover. They, they got some upgrades. And one of those is um, the generator return expression feature. Um, Generator return expression. I don't even have it pulled up. I thought I had I had more notes on this. What 
it, do any of you use the generate a return expressions feature? Yeah, I used it once, but I can't remember when exactly. Oh yeah, a lot actually. <laughs> <laughs> what does it What does it add to your programs that you weren't able to do before? You can return stuff. Um, uh, for well, essentially only using them um, on coroutines. So um, the, the 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 bonus side is that if you have a function that needs to return a result, um, where you while you yield from promises, yeah. um, the last statement of the returning statement will be a return statement instead of a yield. So it it for me that makes the well, contract a bit more clear at what point uh, it should end. Yeah. It also makes it easier because um, normally a yield would then still continue the rest of the function, where with return you can do a quick and, and well, quick and early an early return, making it easier to put your function together and simpler. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I do remember looking at the RC and, and it was saying that as a convention, people were basically adding the return key on that last bit that they wanted their generator to return. And then on the on the other side, it would look for that return key. And if it did, it was like, oh, this generator is over. But now we have built into the language a way to say, okay, I, I'm like yield, 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 yield. And then suddenly I use the return keyword and then we're like, okay, now we're done. Is that kind of, kind of how it works? Um. I actually have no clue how it works internally, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but you would just yeah, use that. You would just use the return keyword in user land, right, at the very end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Or, or even uh, to short circuit it at the, at an earlier point. Cool. That makes that man. That must add a lot of functionality. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, well, the other feature that got added was the generator delegation feature. So it looks like it basically removed a ton of boilerplate when you were yielding another generator. So instead of having to like parse the generator that you're wanting to return, you can just basically uh, use the from keyword. Is that right? Yield this from that, basically? Yeah. Basically yield from and then other generator. That's cool. Yeah. Now, in that, what context is that? Do you, would you want to typically run yield a, results from another generator? Like does that, that's, that starts already like in my mind, it's already starting to blow up just thinking about generators, but like yielding another generator from a generator, it just, I've, my mind can't go there yet. So <laughs> one of the things I did for a new package is that um, I was looking for something in files. And so I had the entry function and then another function. The entry function essentially returns the processed um, items. And the function underneath that scans for files. So the, the second function uh, reads file and start yielding each entry it finds in the file. Um, so while looping in the master function over each file, it would for each file list and then in the for each body, it says yield from read from file. So instead of doing that reading from the file within the same entry function, you delegate it to another one and just yield from that generator used in that second function. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's starting to it's to clear up a little bit there. I think what I my next project is to to try and uh, implement something where there's a generator that's yielding something from another generator <laughs> and see mm -hmm. and see if I can make it work in production. <laughs> Maybe a, a good idea to, to understand the concept is um, generators are, can, are for example, AMP are uh, used to, to um, make promises, right? To have these uh, intermittent return values and, and to be able to always check, are you already done? Yes, no, yes, no. Um, and uh, returning promises from promises, you see where we're going? It's a nested. <laughs> nested thing. Uh, so that's where uh, the uh, generated delegation uh, can can help write more clean code. But um, yeah, I think Aaron would be able to uh, give a lot uh, more and better examples. Unfortunately, he's not here. So the use case is when you have to manage concurrency where one task depends on the result of another concurrent task. 
and do you mm. yield from this task and use in in that task yes yeah and you hide this async asynchronous details so your code just looks linear you have yeah. this 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 yeah i see So I just want to point out on Twitter, we've got event razor. Lee Davis 81 on Twitter uh, is was saying that one thing I love about generators is that I no longer need to use references on iterative functions. And then uh, they've got a link to Stack Overflow here, a link that uh, that talks about generator delegation, like y'all were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a lot of things. There's so many things. We there's still a lot of tangents here. We could go on. I think. Um, but, uh, what's that? That's a long page. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's let's. Uh, we kind of need to wrap this thing up. Um, so I kind of want to land uh, into this thing on maybe one thing uh, from you all's uh, y'all's perspective. What are some common things that you see in the wild? that could be improved by implementing some concurrency, adding a little generator and an event loop mm -hmm. here and there. Uh. <laughs> I, I want to give a very uh, simple and maybe naive example. Um, at one time in, in, in a dark, dark past, uh, I decided to make my own static site generator in PHP. And, uh, you know, I was scanning files, config files and data files, and I was uh, scanning template files and uh, merging them together in generated HTML pages. Uh, and I came to the conclusion that, hey, I'm looping over files and always doing the same thing for each iteration and nothing is actually dependent on the previous iteration. And um, the every iteration is actually a very uh, atomic task. There are no side effects. I could perfectly do this at the same time. I could uh, tell the operating system to start up 10 processes maybe and uh, execute it in parallel. Uh, and it was one of those things that seemed like a very aha moment at the time, but actually it's it's very intuitive when I think back of it that that's the, the thing my mind wanted to, to go to is to um, take something that is, is 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 taking quite a while um, and and paralyze it, and that's uh, to me that that always stayed the the use case when um, looking at async in PHP. We're just we're looping over things, and we could do this in parallel, and you see that already quite a lot. Uh, yeah, it's a very naive example, but oh, uh, to it's, me, it's, it's, it's a good example because for the people listening that uh, don't know this stuff very well, it's 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 a good, a simple start point. Yeah, it all started simple, so that's good. Mm -hmm. I can give you a hundred very complicated examples that mm -hmm. you and I might understand, but the listeners not, and well, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we um we have got uh let's see. Um I've got a bunch of other stuff here. Uh we got through pretty much everything that Aaron wanted to talk about, so that's good. We, there is one of the uh thing you can check out um if you're really interested in diving deeper. There is an RFC called Fiber. If you just go to the wiki.php.net slash RFC C page, you should see it there if you look for Fiber. Um, it's, uh, it, I'll just give you a quick little blurb here. Fibers are primitives for implementing lightweight cooperative concurrency in PHP. Uh, so it should be um, an interesting thing that's being discussed in internals if you're interested in, in learning a little bit more about that. We kind of mentioned it a little earlier, uh, but just wanted to give you a quick blurb and a, and a link to that resource so you can dive more deeply into the subject. Uh, we have a repo on github github.com slash php roundtable there's a repo there called show dash notes it's where you contribute show notes for the shows if you just want to sit there and write down mark down uh for each of the shows it would be really helpful to get those added and i'll give you a total shout out uh, live on air which i'm going to do right now for matthias gutjar 
which I believe is how you say your name. I, I apologize if I'm slaughterizing slaughteri that. If I'm slaughtering your name, I apologize. But uh, uh, Matias contributed the show notes for episode 73, which is PHP static analysis. That was a super fun episode. Uh, I was going to give Matias a shout out in the last episode, but totally got lost in the show notes. So I apologize for missing you in the last episode. Uh, but I also added a little template in the readme. So that makes it a little easier for you to add show notes um, to go in there and just copy paste. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, so thanks again, Matias, for adding the, the show notes for episode 73. Um, and we typically do a developer shout out where we recognize a developer in the community, but I'm dropping the ball a lot on that for getting a sponsor ready. So I apologize. We're not going to have it for that, for this episode, but hopefully by next episode, we'll, we'll be, we'll be doing it. Um, I do want to wrap this up finally with some shameless promotional items. So <laughs> do any of you have uh, stuff that you want to promote? Maybe we'll start off with uh, Brent. Oh, uh, I wrote down two things. I can only remember one. Um, uh, I want to promote my blog, stitcher.io. Uh, I write about PHP, but mostly programming in general, things like OO programming. And I'm a huge uh, visual perception kind of guy. So really into um, optimizing the code visually to make it more easy to read and, and reducing cognitive load, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's what I write about. And the second thing was, uh, I think, uh, our open source work at Spassy, right? Uh, we have we do a lot of Laravel open source at uh, github.com slash Spassy. And there will be a link somewhere, probably. Very cool. What about you, uh, Casey? And do you have anything you want to promote? Uh, aside from React PHP, that's totally awesome. <laughs> 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 no, I have a, a, a product called PHP API Clients uh, that's built. Um, that's where I'm building a synchronous first uh, API client for GitHub, Twitter, um, the Pandabot, uh, Scrutinizer, and and just not not only the client but also a framework underneath it, um, including middleware for requests where you can compose your own client, um, compose the basics, and then build something on top of that. Um, it's a really cool project. I've been starting I've been building it because I needed some of the stuff, and it grew into its own organization and Twitter account. And <laughs> that's how things go, I guess. True that. What about you, Sergey? You got anything you want to promote? Uh, yes, I do. I would like to promote to my books about asynchronous PHP and React PHP. Uh, they are av available on LeanPub. The first one is React PHP for Beginners. It is a step-by-step -step guide on building a synchronous PHP application from scratch. And the second one, Event-Driven PHP, is a sort of cookbook, a set of uh, receipts for different asynchronous use cases. Also visit my YouTube channel where I have screencasts about Re React PHP. Just search on YouTube React PHP tutorial. You will find it. Awesome. We'll have all of these uh, linked on the website. Uh, if you go to phproundtable.com, you'll be able to click in there, see the show notes, and also see the links to all the projects they're talking about. The next episode, will I actually got a new one on the docket. I think I'm going to slide in there right at the beginning of next month. Tech interviews for self-taught PHP programmers. Specifically, if you've ever wanted to work for Amazon or Facebook or Google or one of those big program, uh, big uh, big startups or or big uh, tech companies, they they have these tech interviews that are famously hard and intense for even the most like seasoned developer. Uh, when they get you on a whiteboard and say reverse this binary tree, you're like, what? So we're going to talk about tech interviews and maybe how to prepare for those a little bit better, um, especially for us self-taught PHP programmers. I think that'll be a fun episode. Uh, then probably go with Doc Blocks Annotations and the Like episode, which should be a fun. Um, and a couple of other really fun ones that are coming down the pipe. I'm really excited about it. Lots of stuff coming down the pipe for PHP Roundtable. So I would like to thank Brent and Case Yen and Sergey for joining us in this episode. And we'll see you folks in the next episode. Peace.